And I'm here with current UC Irvine men's basketball player, Dawson Baker. Dawson, wonderful to have you join the show today, my friend. How's it going? Good. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. Absolutely, man. Yeah, I'm excited to have you here because I know that you, again, probably very busy. The season literally just started, what, a week and a half ago or whatever. But I want to kind of go before the season and get into kind of the preseason and what it was like for you and your team to prepare for the season coming out of the COVID year and whatnot. So what was it like for you all to kind of get it back into that groove of the season and get ready for this year? Yeah, it was obviously a lot different than last year. I mean, last year there wasn't much of a preseason. Um, so it, for the freshmen, which was a couple of us, you know, it gave us like a couple of weeks to kind of learn all the plays and learn the culture here and learn everything, which was not a lot of time. Um, so this next year, I think having a year under us was of experience was kind of the biggest thing for, for us and kind of gave us a focus on what to focus on and kind of what's a, um, our strengths and our weaknesses and what we need to work on. Um, so this, this preseason has been something totally different than last year and it's been huge for us. I think it's going to be something that. We'll pay off in the long run come come March. Yeah, I think that's got to be such a relieving feeling for you all, being able to kind of get together. You can all go over the offense, the defense, without feeling rushed. You know, like you said, very little time to get ready. Not a whole lot of time to probably process all of that information. Now, I know you mentioned that it was your freshman year last year. So what was it like going through, obviously, the pandemic, but then also with it being your freshman year? Yeah, I mean, if you – no, my backstory. I mean, I went on a two year mission, so I came back not playing basketball for two years, pretty much. Um, so coming back was kind of a little, a little nerve wracking for me, you know, kind of like, do I still remember how to do this? Can I, can I still do what I, I did before in high school? And so I graduated in 2018 out of high school. Um, and so it's been a while for me like, coming back. And so I was a little nervous at first, um, but I picked everything up pretty fast. And it kind of came back naturally and and everything kind of came back quicker than I expected it to, to come. Um, but everything was a little different, not no bands, not what I was expecting uh, coming into that year. Um, but I think what I found at UCA, UC Irvine was just a spot that needed me, you know, a, a spot I could fill. And it was easy for me to just play my game. Um, and so for that reason, I think it was very easy for me to just adjust and, and get ready for that season, even though there's little time prior to it. Now, talk a little bit more about this mission. I, I read a little bit about it, obviously, but how much of an impact, and I know you've you've made big note of this, how big of an impact this mission that you went on has had on your basketball career. I mean, what was it like having those two years off and then coming back onto the court? I mean, what was that kind of off time, if you will, like for you? Right, it was it was different. And then, I mean, it, it, was, it was hard at first, you know, kind of adjusting my life um, very drastically. Um, but I got used to it and that's the life I was living for two years and my mind was fully there and out on basketball and I was loving it, even though I was living in harsh conditions, you know, kind of living in a third world country where I was sleeping on the floor, no running water, no AC. Um, and it kind of just gave me a perspective on life and everything, you know, on basketball even. And I think without that two years, I don't think I would have been as good of a player as I was when I came back, which is weird to say, you know, not touching a basketball for two years, um, but I came back with a different kind of purpose, different focus, and different outlook on the game and life. And I think that kind of just drive me even more and made me a better player, which is which is weird. And it doesn't really make sense, you know, when we think about it logically. But for some reason, I think I was just more mature. My body was ready. My, my mind was ready for, for college when I when I came back. Well, I think that time away from the game, it kind of allowed you, like you said, to gather your thoughts a little bit and kind of get back to the mental side of things and get ready for, you know, playing and everything else. And then obviously getting ready to play at the division one level also. I mean, that takes a lot of mental fortitude. That's not an easy task at all. I do have to ask, though, how rusty were you when you first came back? What was that <laughs> first week of practice like for you? Um, so when I got back, I mean, there wasn't there wasn't practice yet because of COVID. And so I got back around the end of March. And so COVID was still in full effect. And so I was having to like sneak in the gyms and kind of do all that. And um, I mean, the biggest thing for me was just my conditioning. because I wasn't used to, you know, running that much and being up and down the court as much. That was the biggest thing. But I, right when I got in the gym, I just, right when I started touching the ball again, it was like riding a bike for me. It was kind of just like, okay, I can do this. And my shot was there and the timing, everything was hard to get used to again. But um but the game came back so naturally. I think everything outside the game, the conditioning, the timing of it, you know, the, the defense that was being played on me, that was a different level than high school was all things I had to get used to. And kind of, that was kind of like my freshman year was kind of adjusting to that. Um, and so this year has been a little bit, a little bit different. You know, I feel a lot more mature, even just having that one year. Um, 
but it's it's completely different. But I think conditioning was the biggest thing for me. It was just like getting my my heart rate up and getting used to feeling that like, man, I'm, I'm about to give in kind of moment, but overcome it. Yeah, I think that's got to be the hardest thing to come back from. Obviously, the conditioning part, because the, the skill part, again, like you said, it's like riding a bike. You've played basketball okay. for so long. Eventually, it, it's like muscle memory. It just becomes second nature for you, and you're able to adjust. And quite frankly, you adjust beautifully. You had a huge freshman year. We'll get into that in a minute. But I want to get into this season a little bit and really just how the start of the season's been for you personally and then for your team. I mean, what's been the biggest improvement on this team from last year to now? Yeah, I think – I think if you look at our team last year, defensively, we were we were really outstanding. We held a lot of teams to their their average, um, their team average. Um, and so offensively, we needed some ways to come. Um, but I think offensively, we've we've made some adjustments. You know, we got some good offensive players. Um, just trying to figure out the system here and trying to play to our advantages and play to our strengths. Um, but but I think our defense is still something that we kind of still focus on. Kind of anchors us. Um, something that we can rely on. Um, but I think altogether, just offensively and defensively, we've come a long way. Um, we got some players kind of stepping up in roles. Um, that will go a long way for us because um, we lost some some key players last year with Brad Green and John Artest, who were kind of defensive anchors for us. So people are kind of stepping up in that way. Um, and so I think offensively, we're still coming. We're still, still learning. Um, but it's been one improvement, I think, from the preseason that we've kind of been focusing on is trying to be able to not just hold teams out under 50 points and try to win like we did Boise, but, but try to outscore teams as well as hold them down. Well, I'm sure the more time together in the preseason has a lot to do with that. And again, you guys probably feel a little bit more comfortable, a little bit more free playing, knowing that, Hey, we don't have this COVID cloud hovering over us. We're wondering right. when the next game is going to be canceled or if there's going to even be a game, whatever it might be. So I'm sure that kind of alleviates a lot of the pressure that you all had last year. But I want to get into your career a little bit, and I want to first dive into why did you select on UC Irvine? Um, I mean, there's a lot of factors. I mean, there's a lot of things great about UC Irvine. I mean, it's a winning school. It's a winning program, you know. Um, can't remember the last time they have a, a losing season here. So that was obviously a big factor because I'm a winner and I, I want to compete. Um, and it's close to home for me. I only live like 30 minutes away. And so that was a big thing for me, having my family close by. And, you know, this is kind of where I grew up, kind of my childhood. Um, and also it was kind of my one my one offer. And that's kind of the reason I weigh num number one. It's kind of remind me of that. That This is the one school that, you know, trusted in me and, and believed in me. And those other schools that I'm trying to prove wrong every game. Um, and so those are some big key factors of why I'm here today. I love that. I mean, I love that. I love how there's obviously a symbolism behind the number and it means a lot to you. Now I do have to ask, you guys are called the ant eaters, correct? <laughs> correct. Yeah. Okay. So I have to ask, do friends and family kind of, I don't know, throw jokes out about you guys being ant eaters. I love the name. I think it's one of my <laughs> favorite college mascots like ever, but I'm sure people have probably made a couple comments of like, you guys are the ant eaters. Yeah, it's always it's always a joke that's hovering around here. Um, it's just a funny. I mean, you don't really hear much about ant eaters ever in your life, and then you have a college named after. It's kind of random. But some people like you, like they love it. They're like, man, this is the greatest mascot probably in college. And there's some people that kind of poke fun at it. You get both sides. Yeah, I mean, it's creative. You know, like you said, it's an animal that gets no love. But if you're at UC Irvine, <laughs> there's probably a lot of love behind that. Um, right. But getting into last year a little bit more. You had a huge year. You were named the Big West Freshman of the Year. What would you say was the biggest piece to your success last year that really led you to being named the Big West Freshman of the Year? Um, I think scoring was obviously one thing that our team needed, and I kind of filled that role, um, being able to shoot. I shot really well coming in. I mean, I, was, I think it was one point in the season where I was halfway through the season. I was shooting like 53% from threes. Um, so obviously that helps a lot, be able to stretch the floor for, for my team do things like that. Um, but I think I just saw a, a spot that needed to be filled on this team. You know, I, I knew what coach wanted. I knew what I needed to do. Um, and I was able to do that. And I just came in playing confident right away. You know, I just came in knowing my game, knowing where I wanted to get on the court, knowing my shots and taking them full, fully confident I was going to make it. And I think that's what kind of just led me to end up being the, the freshman of the year. Now, everybody – or at least for the most part, or sometimes at least, you'll see videos of guys being announced or told that they've won a certain award and whatnot, and there's some sort of fun way of, of it being released to that individual. Was there any kind of fun, unique way that you found out that you won the award? 
not really, actually. I mean, it was COVID year, so I can't really expect too much. Um, but, I mean, I just got a text um, from my coach and from a bunch of people just congratulating me. And then I looked on social media, and then I saw I was, I was named uh, freshman of the year. And so that was kind of that was kind of it for me. I mean, it was exciting and all, um, but you know, you get that award right before uh, kind of the postseason, you know, the Big West tournament, and so you, your mind's still kind of focused on that, and there's still stuff that has to be done. Um, but it was a nice kind of relieving moment where it's like, man, I, I feel like I accomplished something this year, and even if you know all all goes wrong, you know, at least I could say I you know I did what I did. Well, you proved a lot of those schools wrong also. You have to remember that <laughs> right. you proved a lot right. of schools wrong, and uh, I'm sure UC Irvine's very, very happy that you selected on them. Now, going into your team success last year, what would you say were some of the biggest keys to your team's overall success last season? Uh, defensively, we were huge. I mean, historically in this in this uh, program, uh, defensively, we set some records here. Um, I think that was just the biggest thing. Like we had teams that were coming in that were offensive teams and we completely just shut them down, shut down their best player. You know, like we take pride in like having players that have a high average play below their average when they play against us. And I think defensively that just led us um, straight to the, the championship, the Big West tournament. Um, but I think that was just the huge, the biggest thing for me was defensively. Yeah, defense, hey, wins championships for you, or at least gets you there. Right. It, it puts you in that position to win, right? I mean, defense right. is a huge, huge aspect of basketball that I'm sure a lot of people like to ignore because everyone wants to score a lot, but the <laughs> defense is the most important aspect to it. What is it going to take for you all this year to make it back to the conference championship? Because I'm sure your team's got a lot of revenge on your mind, losing in the conference championship. You want to make it back there. So what is it going to take for you all to get there? And we're not going to forget about that defense. And I think offensively, we're going to step up, play more confidently, play to our strengths, um, put the ball in the hole and, and get up and down a little bit quicker, play more, more up pace and kind of wear teams out with our depth. I mean, we got a lot of players that can play here and we can go to the bench and reach really deep to pull someone out and, and play them. You know, I think we're going to wear teams out like we have done already early this season. Um, but I think that's going to be it, like using our depth and our defense and play confidently on offense. Well, I am very excited for some Anteater basketball this year and just to see you guys out in action for sure. Dawson, you've been great to have on the show. Before I let you go, one final question, and it kind of gets into this epiphany or this realization, whatever you want to call it, as to when you realized or knew that you could play basketball at the Division One level. So for you, when did it kind of click in your head and you said, you know, I could play Division One basketball. This is not a crazy thought. I mean, it happened very young for me, which is weird to say. I mean, I had – my dad played college basketball. I had two brothers that played college basketball. And so, for me, it was almost, like, expected, you know, like, oh, I'm just going to play college basketball. Um, and I didn't really expect it, you know, not working. I worked really hard and made sure I was ready for it. Um, but early at a young age when I was playing, like, in my driveway, just on the little hoop, like, I always knew I was going to play college basketball. And it didn't go as smoothly as I thought at times. And it was hard at times, you know, um, and only receiving one offer. Um, there was a challenges and the struggles at a point. But I think at an early age, I always knew that I was going to play college basketball. And I never kind of I never really doubted it. I was just worked hard and saw what my brothers did and kind of had a work ethic in my family that kind of taught me just to keep working. And I think that's the reason why I succeeded in that dream and at an early age. Absolutely. Yeah, it's all about just putting it in your head first, the mentality, and then being able to put it out into, you know, real life, obviously. Do your brothers still play one-on-one -on -one with you one -on -one with you in the driveway? <laughs> have, they, have they retired from that? I think they've retired for sure um, for their sake. Um, they wouldn't like to see me beat up on them. But as a young – because I'm the youngest of them all, um, and so they used to have their fun beating up on me, taking me in the post when I was little. Um, and so they would always – I mean, every time we play one-on-one, there always ends up in a fight. Um, and so it was something we still talk about today and kind of some bragging rights that we, we hold on each other. What age did you first beat your brothers? Oh man. I was, I got really close when I was a freshman in high school. My brother was a freshman in college and I, we were doing like a shooting competition and I shot just as good as him. And then we played one-on-one -on -one full court and, uh, and I just hit some just like, absurd shots to begin and so I was up early it was probably like seven he had one point and then he I stepped on his ankle and he kind of rolled it a little bit I was like oh like you want to be done and he's like no like I'm gonna win this game and after that I didn't score and he scored every point <laughs> and I lost that one um 
but I, I mean, now, now every once in a while, they'll come back down, uh, down here and we'll play and, and I can kind of easily take them, but it's not as, not as satisfying as it, as it would be if they were still playing, you know? Um, and they never gave me that satisfaction. I think they knew to let off when I got good enough to beat them. So I wouldn't get that satisfaction. Well, I think that those many, many days playing in the driveway with them has probably helped you get to where you're at today and, and why you've been so successful, my friend. So good luck the rest of the way. Stay healthy. Stay well. Keep going. Keep going forward. You're going to continue to prove everyone wrong. Um, and as always, go Anteaters. Appreciate it. Thank you so much.